What's up, guys, and welcome back to another video for Scourge of War, Les Seigneurs. Uh, now, before we get into it, a uh, couple of things I want to talk about pertaining to my last video, the uh, the first video I put up for Les Seigneurs. Um, so the first thing I want to get out of the way is a clarification that Mitra wanted me to make. Um, he wanted me to make it real clear that Les Seigneurs is... Uh, an unofficial mod. It is not an official release from Norbsoft Dev. Um, I use the word Norb Norbsoft Dev rather loosely just because the people that created uh, Les and Jors, uh, you know, Mitra and a couple other people, they do work for Norbsoft Dev. But this has nothing to do with uh, the company itself. When I say Norbsoft Dev, I'm just speaking of the people who created this mod collectively. I don't actually mean the company, just the fact that they all kind of work for the company. Um, <clears throat> but Laysenjor is just an unofficial mod uh, that uh, they they created. It's it's not uh, any kind of official release by the company Norbsoft Dev. Um, apparently this is important because um, I guess Matrix Games owns the publishing rights for Norbsoft Dev. So any official release from Norbsoft Dev would, whether free or or not, would have to uh, uh, be released through them, through through their website. Uh, and um, this, this is just an unofficial mod that you can download off the Norbsoft forums. Uh, I also use the word expansion. Uh, and again, when I use the word expansion, I'm speaking more of the... Um, in, in, how comparable it is uh, in terms of content uh, compared to the other expansions that were released previously, like Wavra, Katrabra, uh, and, and Ligny, in terms of, you know, it's a new battle, it's a new map, new order of battle, there's five scenarios, just like all the other expansions from uh, brigade level all the way up to the full battles. So in terms of the uh, the amount of work and content that's in it. Uh, again, I'm loosely using the word expansion. Um, so I may still use those words from time to time, just because sometimes the things that come out of my mouth just come out of my mouth uh, uh, without me putting too much thought into it. Uh, but this is not any kind of official re uh released by Norbsoft Dev. It's not an official expansion. It's just an, it's just considered to be by them an unofficial mod uh, for, for Scourge of War Waterloo. So even if I, in the future, just throw out the term Norbsoft Dev or expansion or other, I'm just using those words loosely. I'm just using the word Norbsoft Dev just to speak collectively of the guys who created Les and Jours. And I'm just using the term expansion because in, 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 in terms of content, it's it is comparable to what was released in the previous expansions. Uh, so just that's just something that Mitra really wanted me to clarify. So I, I don't want to get anybody in trouble and by claiming this is some sort of official release from Norbsoft, uh, and then have Matrix Games go, "Hey, what the hell, guys? You guys releasing stuff behind our backs, or you know, or anything like that." Um, so yeah, unofficial mod. Just a homemade project by some of the guys uh, uh, that uh, work for Norbsoft Dev, but it's not a Norbsoft Dev release. Just wanted to get that out of the way. Um, the other thing was uh, the last video I did highlighted um, some problems that were ongoing with the Grog Toolbar. Uh, I had already discovered that a lot of the Austrian formations didn't work. Some of them would crash the game, and in the but all the French formations did work. So I went into a French scenario thinking everything was going to be okay. And we wound up finding a problem where the Austrian line battalions would not fire. And at the time of the video, I didn't really know why. But uh, I, as I said, I would do. I posted the video on Norbsoft Dev and uh, on Norbs. I'm sorry, on the Norbsoft forums. Um, and they they all got in on it very quickly, and uh, with help from Mitra and Biondo and Reb Bugler, we quickly figured out that the problem was still the Grog toolbar. Uh, so when I found that out, I was, of course, pretty depressed because I thought that pretty much meant I was not going to be able to play this mod. Um, but... Uh, 
through uh, Reb Bugler's efforts and some help from Mitra, uh, I'm happy to say that pretty much all the problems with the Grog toolbar uh, have been rectified, and it now uh, it, it's still I'm still testing it. We're still testing everything out, uh, but it seems like all the problems are have been fixed. Um, so <clears throat> I'm going to post a link in this video. Uh, uh, linking you guys to the Lace and Jours mod uh, download thread. And uh, I'll also, uh, in the same thread, if you scroll down to post number 22, uh, which is a post by Reb Bugler uh, linking the new uh, Grog toolbar, which he's been updating as he's been testing it, um, you can download the latest version of the toolbar that I'm using right now, um, and it is current as of uh, today is, uh, what, June 27th. So uh, by the time this video goes up, that will be yesterday. But uh, that is the current version of the Grog toolbar that works with Lace Centures. Uh, so there's one very important thing you have to know about this newest version of the Grog toolbar. And let me just click on the modifications here. It must be in prioritized below Les Centures. So if you notice, it's in alphabetical order, the, uh, the mod. So all I did when I downloaded the newest toolbar is I just put a Z in front of the real title of the, th of the, the mod, just so I would make sure Z, it's the last letter of the alphabet, I would make sure that it's prioritized uh, below Les Centures. And what I mean by prioritized below is exactly what it looks like here. Les Centures is on top, Grog toolbar is on the bottom. It has to be this way. Red Bugler says it has to be this way or it can cause problems. Uh, so you'll have Lace and Juris checked. You'll have the expanded Grog toolbar checked. And like I said, I, however you want to reprioritize it uh, to get it below Lace and Juris is will work. Um, I just put a Z in front of it because it's in alphabetical order and that made it go below uh, Lace and Juris. Uh, so yeah, just that's all you got to do uh, is just download the toolbar uh, from the thread I'm going to link in the description, replace uh, replace your old toolbar with this new one, uh, do something like what I did here to make uh, with a Z in front of it to make sure it's prioritized below Les Centur and you should have no problem. Uh, and then just click use selected mods, make sure you get your little uh, hourglass and it will take you back to the screen. All right, so today we are going to take a look at the first brigade scenario. Uh, and it's called Hessian Fury and it's one hour long and we're going to be playing the Hessian first brigade. Uh, it's considered to be an easy scenario. Uh, uh, it's the only brigade scenario in uh, uh, Lace and Jura. So I'm starting off with it and, you know, I always work from kind of the smallest command up to the, the big ones. Um, uh, uh, just on a separate note, I will be replaying the scenario that I played in the first Lace and Jura video uh, now that the Austrians are fixed and they will shoot back. Um, so I'll just retitle uh, the first video like Lace and Jura first look or something like that. Um, because uh, Obviously, with the Austrians not shooting back, it really is just, it's its not a really good playthrough. Um, so I will be replaying that scenario probably in the next video, uh, since that's the only divisional scenario. And uh, we will take a crack at that again. I'll probably use the same defense, uh, the same setup I used uh, in the, uh, the first playthrough. And we'll just see how it unfolds with the Austrians able to fight back. Uh, but uh, I wanted to start, uh, since everything's working now, the Grog Toolbar now works with the Austrian side, I wanted to start with the first brigade scenario. So the difficulty is easy and the situation is general. The French await us behind the Safel River, hoping to protect Strasbourg from our forces. His Excellency, the Crown Prince, I guess maybe that means the Crown Prince, has ordered the general assault against the enemy defensive position. Your brigade's objective is the town of Mundels, Mundelsheim. But before it can be reached, you are required to clear the town of Lampertheim from the enemy forces there fortified. The 2nd Brigade is marching to reach you. It is important 
to reach and capture Mundelheism to support the main Austrian assault on the center. And the mission is capture the towns of Mundelsheim and Lampertsheim. And, uh, okay, the forces available to us, uh, we have uh, the 1st uh, Infantry Brigade under uh, uh, General Major uh, Just. Oh, I'm never going to be able to pronounce this. Justice Leonhard Freher von Folenius. I'm sure that was terrible, guys. The only thing worse than my French is is my German. <laughs> it's, so uh, we need 2,000 points for a major victory. And the historical information here says the Hessian forces captured Lampertheim, but could not clear Mundelsheim from the French forces. The French held on until eventually being ordered to leave by the General Rapp. Uh, so we're going to have to try and do a little better than the Hessians did uh, historically in this scenario. And uh, once again, uh, our scenario author is David Dolangelo. Uh, all right, so let's uh, get going here. And uh, here we go, booting up the first brigade scenario for Les Senjur. And once again... Uh, just huge shout out to Mitra, Biondo, and Red Bugler for everything they did getting this toolbar to work. Amazing job, guys, and in only a couple of days. Uh, so my eternal gratitude uh, for making this happen because, as I've said many times, I do not leave France without the Grog toolbar. I must have it. So, uh, all right, here we go. Uh, and Reb, your, uh, your corrections here for making the terrain appear appear to be working. So one of the things you should notice here, if you look at these uh, Hessians, they're level eight. We'll get back to that in a, in a quick second here, because the courier is about to pop up. And it says, General von Folinius, the crown prince has ordered our division to assault the enemy left flank and take the town of Mundelsheim. Advance with your brigade and tank take Lampertheim before proceeding to the final objective. The second brigade of the division will reach you soon. Vale Gluck, General, which I think means good luck. Uh, I could be wrong, but that's what I'm guessing. Uh, and that is from our division commander. So, uh, all right, here we have our uh, Hessian brigade here. And one of the things I quickly noticed about these, uh, these Hessians is we have five battalions. Four out of these five battalions are level eight elite troops. Now, I've talked about this in the main series many times. The only troops in the game that have or previously had troop qualities that high were the Grenadiers and the Chasseurs of the French Imperial Guard. Um, so these troops are basically awesome. They are equivalent to troops from the French Imperial Guard. They're absolute badasses. Uh, so uh, as always with troops with troop qualities this high, we're going to be able to do a lot more with them than we would with your average run-of-the-mill level four, five, or six troops. More charges, better combat, better fatigue, better morale, better everything. Uh, and um, we're going to make use of that in this scenario. So this is about the third time I played this scenario. The first time I played it, um, uh, I was kind of just testing out the first revision of the Grog Toolbar. Uh, and I just kind of went at the scenario in a kind of straight-ahead manner. Uh, the second time, I uh, tried to put a little more thought into it and um, uh, avoid some sticky situations that we're going to uh, uh, encounter later on. Uh, and this is the third time where I'm thinking about pretty much going back to kind of what I did uh, uh, the first time I played it and just really making use of this Hessian troop quality. Uh, when you have level eight elite troops, you don't need to be you don't need to fear a lot <laughs> because they're just so good. So uh, we're advancing on this first town here of Lampertheim, and we can see that in the uh, little orchard out here, we have a small group of French skirmishers uh, as well as a French unit in the town back there. So it doesn't appear like a lot is in front of us. So here's some nice shots of us uh, advancing in formation here in the uh, assault column, or column by division, as uh, it's sometimes called. 
And uh, I really think they did a great job on these troops. The sprites look great. The flags look great. You know, it really looks like different forces than, you know, the Allies or the Prussians, who were also very different looking from each other. So uh, this is a, by brigade standards, this is a very big brigade. 4,300 men uh, is big for uh, a brigade. Maybe not for a Hessian brigade, I don't know. This is the first one I've ever dealt with. But compared to, say, French or Allied or, or Prussian brigades, um, this, is, this is pretty big. And uh, we do have an eight-gun uh, battery. They are not under our command. They, uh, we're only commanding a brigade here. You wouldn't get an artillery battery unless you were commanding the entire division. Uh, but nevertheless, they are supporting our advance here with some bombardment on the town. As uh, our Hessian Brigade is coolly advancing in very orderly formations uh, upon the town of Lamperthame. And uh, our commanding officer here has uh, gotten slightly ahead. But uh, we'll let him sit there while our troops uh, pull up alongside him. Now it only looks like there's one group of French skirmishers uh, in front of us here. I could probably just advance the whole, I could definitely just advance the whole brigade and kind of just walk right, eat some casualties and just walk right through them and kind of knock them out of the way. Um, but uh, instead I wanted to get into a little firefight here with these skirmishers, so what we'll do is we'll uh, uh, advance our brigade to just outside of musket range, deploy a couple of skirmisher units to uh, put in front of them and on either side of them and surround them and just uh, and uh, shoot them up and get them out of there before uh, advancing on the town. So this is Lamperthim right in front of us here, and uh, behind it, you could see over here, is the town of, of Mundelsheim that we also have to take. So a little bit more operational movement than your typical brigade scenario in terms of we're not just advancing on one objective, we take it, we hold it, and that's the end of it. So uh, there's uh, one town we have to capture, and then I guess we have to move on to the second one here. So uh, I'm just advancing the brigade. I just want to get them uh, kind of just outside musket range of the skirmisher unit there in the Orchid uh, so that when we deploy our skirmishers, they don't have that far to run uh, and, and you know wear their fatigue down any more than is necessary. So yeah, all these uh, all these battalions here are level eight elite troops, except for the one on our very far left. That one must be the runt of the litter. They're level five seasoned, so they're just kind of stock okay troops. Uh, but the rest of our battalions, crack troops, best of the best. So uh, we're gonna kick off some level eight elite skirmishers here from our level eight elite units and uh, just advance them to get on uh, the front of the skirmishers uh, as well as we'll also kick out uh, two more uh, little skirmisher units to get on uh, either side of them and fire into their flanks. And as always, just wait for them to start moving before you take command of them so that the toolbar flips and you can recall them later on. All right, so we, uh, we're sending our skirmisher units out on either side. You can see the ones in front have already engaged, and uh, they've already inflicted two losses on the skirmishers, the French skirmishers. We've taken one, too. That's bound to happen. You know, the enemy have muskets, too. 
But uh, our unit is already doing really well. They've inflicted six losses. They've taken two. And our other skirmisher units are moving into position uh, on the French flanks here. And you notice that the unit that was inside the town has uh, gone and buggered off. Uh, I don't know if they uh, retreated to uh, their, the other town or what their story is, but they, they seem to have buggered off. So all that's left here is this skirmisher unit. So uh, we're going to shoot them up, get some points, and then occupy this town and see what the objective situation is. So uh, there's the objective right there, which we'll occupy as soon as we finish uh, sending these French skirmishers packing. So uh, this skirmish unit has just engaged, and I'm going to advance the skirmisher units on the flank while they're engaged, just uh, because... Uh, as they advance, their fire um, will become more and more effective. Uh, and they're not being targeted by the French skirmisher. They're not being fired at at all because the French skirmisher unit is only firing at the unit in front of them. Uh, so we can advance the flanking skirmisher units and make their fire more effective without actually having to take any losses because the French aren't firing at them. So the... Our right flanking unit here has already inflicted four losses. You can see the uh, French bodies starting to pile up on the ground there. So they will load and shoot uh, and kind of advance their ground while they are firing. So it's a great way to kind of close the distance without not shooting, because shooting is what it was casually. So rather than um, rather than stopping and moving them, which would cause them to stop shooting, and then they would start shooting again once they reach their destination, you can do this. You can use uh, advance while engaged to close the distance but still keep shooting. which is an especially great thing to do when you can uh, put units on other units' flanks where they can't fire back at you. So we are raining a hail of lead down on these French skirmishers from three sides and uh, putting quite a licking on them. And uh, the rest of our brigade is uh, peacefully waiting uh, while our skirmishers uh, do their work and, and clear out the French skirmishers. And uh, our flanking skirmishers are doing great. They're dropping these French Frenchmen really, really quickly. And as they get closer, they're doing even better work. So our unit in the Orchid on the French right flank over there uh, is really doing some great work. And uh, even our, they've inflicted 19 casualties and uh, our skirmish unit in front here is also doing well. They've inflicted 17 casualties, they've taken 5 losses. Oh, I'm sorry, it's not an Orchid, it's uh, a vineyard. So we're going to continue advancing the skirmisher unit and pressing the advantage here. And we probably will also do the same with this, this unit here. And, uh, well, they're still advancing. They've inflicted 24 losses. They are absolutely murdering this French skirmisher unit. I can't imagine uh, that they're going to stand there and take much more of this. If they're a 100-man skirmisher unit, just this skirmish unit has wiped out a quarter of their force. So, uh, I can't imagine there being much life left in them. As you can see, there's not many of them left standing. And, 
And uh, yeah, there's only a couple of them left. And there they go. So, nearly wiped out. There they go. But, uh, you know, they may have done their job in buying the French some valuable time. Especially if that battalion that was in the town uh, has fallen back to uh, the next town. We'll have to see what uh, awaits us. So uh, I'm going to start moving these skirmisher units into the uh, objective area over here. I'm not sure if this is actually like a garrison building or whatever. Um, but uh, let's start bringing them in here and get the officer in here. And uh, let's see, what do we need? We need 200 men within a radius of 100 yards, and we got to hold it for four minutes for, I think it's at 500 points. So uh, our two flanking skirmish units, of course, are 100-man skirmish units. They didn't take any losses, so that's 200 men. So we'll just stick those uh, skirmish units into the uh, building there and um, uh, move the officer in there, and we'll recall this, uh, this last skirmish unit here. So in the interest of saving time, I think what we're going to do is, even though we can't use the brigade commander because we're sending him into the building, uh, we will start moving the battalions up uh, just to save time, uh, one at a time here. Uh, we'll just move them manually uh, just to get them up past the town and uh, maybe get a visual on what's, uh, what's in front of us here. While, Because uh, we have to sit here for five minutes just to once we take control of the objectives, we have to sit here for five minutes just to get the points. So uh, it makes no sense to leave the battalions all the way back there for five minutes and then bring them up. So in the interest of saving time, we will start just advancing them one by one. Uh, so we've occupied the objective now. And we need to just sit tight for five minutes and hold it. Which is fine, it'll probably take that long just to get the battalions up here in, in, in front of the town. Alright, so we got four and a half more minutes to go. We've got uh, 81 points uh, from the losses we inflicted on the skirmishers. So, uh... Uh, we inflicted 64 losses total on them. So, yeah, I'm guessing they were a 100-man skirmisher group, and uh, we wiped out two-thirds of their force. So uh, here comes our brigade. Seems like our supporting artillery is just kind of sitting there. You can see uh, the French bodies that... Uh, we, uh, we killed laying uh, on the ground there. Some of our Austrian, or, or Hessian, I'm sorry, Hessian uh, compatriots here that died in the, uh, the service of their country. And here come the rest of our troops. So about three minutes left to go until we uh, can claim the objective. And uh, we can see that there's definitely some French activity huddled around this town here. Uh, they're all kind of question marks because we can't really see them. Although we can get a, a little glimpse of these skirmishers still running away. Bye, guys. They are probably running away, screaming to their commander, the Hessians are coming, the Hessians are coming. So about two minutes and uh, 15 seconds until uh, we can claim the objective and move on.
and uh, well, we're pretty close to having these battalions in something of a, a, a line here. Just need to do a little finessing. Maybe rotate these guys a little. And I'm using the brigade commander just to see the placement. So one battalion is a little behind, probably the far right one. We'll just click on it and uh, move them up to be more in line. All right, so as we get closer here, we can start to see a little bit of what awaits us here. And uh, we can see a French battery of artillery very skillfully deployed right in front of this river. Uh, as I talked about uh, in the last video, rivers really slow down your movement. And just as we were going to use skirmishers uh, to screen the riverbank in the, in the last video, uh, because of how much it would have slowed down the uh, the enemy movement, that's something we are now going to have to contend with because uh, the French guns are deployed in a really good spot right in front of the river uh, that's going to really slow down our movement. And so we can now catching a sight of a couple of French battalions uh, by the town here. We got at least two battalions here. And the rest of the French battery is unlimbering. <clears throat> getting, ready, getting ready to pluck away at us. So our battalions are starting to move through the town here. Should be getting close here. We've only, uh, okay, we, we did it. We just got this objective. Good work, General. Now proceed to the conquest of town of Mundelhazel, Mundelsheim. I'm sure I'm pronouncing that terribly. So we have claimed the objective. We got 500 points for it. So let's move the officer out now to rejoin his brigade. And uh, we'll double click him just to get him out there as quickly as possible. Uh, these two skirmisher units, we can recall them now. And they are apparently both from this uh, battalion here, uh, which caused the battalion to stop moving. So we're going to have to get them moving again. So, all right, they're, uh, they're moving once again. They'll rejoin their skirmisher unit that's walking out. And here come the rest of our troops. So if you can see, the artillery has already inflicted 10 losses on uh, our far right battalion over here. Uh, even from that distance, they've dropped 10 of them. So now that the brigade commander is free, uh, we can again start to use just brigade level formations and uh, get everybody going here. So at this point, we've inflicted 64 losses. Uh, we've taken 17. Ten of those are from the French artillery on the opposite side of the river there. And we're just waiting for our rest of our battalions to come up here. And slowly but surely, here they come. So 
So ahead of us, we can see at least uh, one French battery of artillery and at least two battalions of infantry waiting for us. And, uh, okay, our guns have limbered up, and they are advancing. So if we click on them, even though we don't have control of them, we can see where they're headed. So they're moving right up in front of the town here. So like a good artillery battery, they're moving up to support our advance here. So it's time to uh, start getting the brigade moving towards our second town here of Mundelheim. And um, the first time I played this, this is pretty much what I did. I just kind of sent the brigade straight at them. Uh, sort of casualties be damned. These are guard level units. They can take it. Uh, yeah, we're going to have to eat some canister fire crossing the river. Uh, we're going to lose a lot of men, but um, because of the fact that the only level 8 elite unit always deploys in brigade formation on the far left, uh, I set us up here so that they're kind of out of the way of the guns, and the troops that are going to be taking the canister fire are real high-quality troops. So, yeah, we're going to be losing a lot of men, but they're going to be from units that are tough, units that can take it. The second time I played this scenario, which was the first time I tested the first revision of the Grog Toolbar, I tried something a little more convoluted. Uh, I tried kind of marching kind of around uh, on the right here, crossing further downstream, and then kind of trying to come this way. The guns just turned to face me. Uh, I still ate some canister fire. Not as much as you eat this way, but it takes a lot longer. Um, and what I discovered was this uh, objective in the second town here has kind of a long rotation. Uh, and the fact that I took so much time to march kind of downriver and cross away from the guns uh, ended up costing me uh, too much time. Uh, so in this is my third playthrough. I decided to kind of go back to what I tried at the beginning and just uh, on the first playthrough, I tried and um, casualties be damned. This is part of attacking these guns are in our way. We have no choice but to kind of march into them and uh, eat some canister on the way in uh, and, and, and get them out of there. So you can see, as some of these battalions are now crossing the river, how much it really slows down the movement. Now, this over here, where this unit is, this is the level 5 unit. So everything that's going to be coming into the front here are, are really, really good troops. As you can see, they're still working their way across these rivers here. Really slows down the movement. Bridge is blown, no good ways across, just got to slog our way through it. Going to get a little wet. Look how, look how slow this unit's moving. This one is just starting to reach the opposite side of the bank, and then it's got to cross another one. So yeah, we're going to have to take a lot of artillery uh, on the way in. You can see, uh, you can see cannonball shit hits just right in a row there. And our gun battery is starting to make its way through to the, the town. Uh, now you can see our brigade commander is actually getting way ahead of his troops because he's been marching along the road, basically. And officers, I don't think, really pay attention to terrain. Or actually, they do. Um, but most of his, he, this is the only part he had to cross, and most of what he's been doing has been along the road. So he's gotten way ahead of his battalions, uh, 
and is actually in the process of crossing the river. You can see it's slowing his movement down too. It does. It does. Terrain does affect officer movement. Um, but that's okay. Even when he gets to his destination, he's not going to be targeted by the guns. The infantry is not going to start shooting at just an officer. The game doesn't work that way. Um, so it's okay that the officer is just way out in front of his troops. Uh, combat units would have to be present for the enemy units to, to start shooting. So you can see the shells bursting overhead. Uh, and uh, we're kind of down in a little bit of a valley at the moment, but once we come out of this little uh, river area, the French guns again will be in much closer range and their effectiveness will really pick up. As you can see, we just took another seven losses. And it's just a crawl trying to get through these, this, this river. So we're really starting to close in on these guns now. So you can see our officer has made it to his destination and uh, yeah, the guns are not shooting at him. The infantry is not shooting at him. They don't, it's not the way the game works. They don't shoot at just officers. There has to be combat units present. So it's okay. He can just sit there and wait for his troops to come up. Uh, no, we can see two more French battalions coming in, so we know of at least four French battalions on the field right now, along with their, uh, their artillery battery. So uh, we are going to have a fight on our hands. However, like I said, these Hessian troops are really, really good. Level 8 troop quality is just the best in the game. So uh, even though we're going to have to eat some canister on the way in, and uh, you can see we're up to 48 losses that we've taken now. As we get closer, the French guns are going to become more effective. We've taken 18 losses from uh, one unit now. These units aren't really being targeted. They're kind of advancing kind of under cover of trees and so forth. These guys have taken 20 losses. So yeah, the French guns are just racking up the points. So all right, this French, this town of, Lamp of Mundelsheim has been reinforced by two more French battalions. So uh, what we can see, we know they have at least four battalions of infantry and an eight-gun artillery battery. So here's our level five seasoned unit. And uh, the artillery just caught another two men. But as we enter this river, that's when the hell's really going to begin. That's when they're going to start switching to close range canister fire and just ripping holes into us. But when we get into that river, uh, it's going to pay to start double clicking the units. Because we don't want to have to eat that canister fire any longer than we absolutely have to. So for these, uh, these two units that um, are going to be charging the guns, we're just uh, modifying their destination a little bit. There goes the canister. Just something we got to do here. Got to be tough, boys. Got to eat some grape shot as we move in. As you can see, just ripping holes in, in our lines. And they're causing our point total, of course, to plummet. We were at over 500 points before. Uh, 
now we're down to under under 500 points as they're continuing to rip into us here just tear huge holes in our our columns And uh, you know, by no means is this a tutorial, and I'm saying this is the best way to do it. It's only the third time I've played this scenario. Um, but in the interest of trying to get this, get to this town and, and, and take these, uh, these guns as quickly as possible, I uh, figured straight ahead is probably the quickest option, even though we're, gonna, we're, we're just getting worked. You can see our score is just plummeting. So uh, some of our other troops have uh, started to move into position. You can see two of these French guns are moving out to target this unit now, which is deploying into line. But I can't start charging until these units get out of the river. And uh, when I charge, it's going to be a brigade level charge, and we're just going to hit everything we can. Uh, one of the things about Scourge of War Waterloo that's different from the Civil War games is that even when units are on take charge, as you can see all these units are, Brigade level commands or certain brigade level commands still work, uh, like charge is one of them. So even though I'm going to start mashing the charge button here from the brigade commander, but even though these units are still on take charge, uh, they still work. So that works, retreat works, uh, advance uh, while engage works, uh, a couple of other ones, double click works. So even though these units are on take charge, uh, we can still just mash out the charge from the brigade commander. And as you can see, we're taking all of these French guns and turning them into Hessian guns. And uh, we're just abusing that level 8 troop quality right now. There's no way these, these French troops are, are comparable. The only way they would be is if they were part of the Imperial Guard, and they're not. So as you can see, our points are now climbing really high as we start massacring these French in hand-to-hand -hand combat. And this was the same kind of result I got uh, in the first playthrough I did. I, I uh, took a lot of casualties on the approach, but the French were no match for the Hessian bayonets. So we have gotten most of this battery. Uh, two of these French guns are skedaddling. Uh, and now I'm going to deploy this uh, this uh, battalion into line and start shooting at this battalion to protect uh, our guns that we just captured and I'm going to deploy them right in front of the right in front of the guns just protect them because once the guns start getting shot at they'll, they'll run away and we don't have control over these guns even though we captured them they're they're, they're they, we don't gain control of them but they are at least uh, hatching guns now so, uh, all right, we've cleared out the first line of defense. Let's see if we can bring the officer up and see if we are close enough to occupy the objective. Start bringing our leftmost units up, see if we can get around the French flank. See if we can uh, set up in line and shoot into the town here. And we will move this unit uh, around to uh, get on the flank of the, these battalions here. So uh, we're in line here, engaged in a firefight with these uh, French, with this French battalion. They do have another battalion in reserve. We're going to see if we can swing this battalion around the flank. Hopefully these guns won't unlimber and become a problem. One of them is moving off, the other is uh, just sitting there. So, alright, we have the objective. And as you can see, we need nearly 15 minutes to hold it. And this was the issue I ran into uh, the, uh, when I tried to kind of circumvent the guns. It just took too long uh, to get to the objective. And by the time I got to it, I wasn't even able to get a full rotation out of it. So. Uh, we're back to the more direct approach of just crossing the river, eating the guns, eating the canister fire, and uh, just slogging our way through, uh, making use of our troop quality. So, uh, all right, these guys are in position, and I 
want to charge them, but I realize I can't charge them because they're winded, their fatigue has fallen below uh, the point where they can charge. Um, took a lot out of them to double click them across that river, and then they did take a few guns to boot. But uh, we, are, we are now deployed in line, shooting at, uh, uh, we can see a French battalion moving out, moving out of the town there. So uh, here's our level 5 seasoned unit that we kind of kept out of trouble because uh, we didn't want to get them into a situation where they were eating a lot of canister because that might have broken them. So we'll bring them up and kind of keep them in reserve for now. Always good to keep kind of a fresh unit uh, in stock and, and uh, see how we can make use of them later on. The French are giving ground, but they still have some battalions in reserve. Uh, they still have a unit kind of inside the town that we are shooting it out with. The rest of the French guns have withdrawn to the top of the hill. And as you can see, we have gained back a lot of our points, and uh, uh, due to the, uh, the the charges, and uh, we're we're closing in on a thousand points here. We need two thousand for a major victory. So uh, let's continue to advance here and uh, push up against these French. You can see this uh, battalion is now withdrawing. Uh, we're still we're still slogging it out with one battalion inside the uh, the town here. We seem to be doing okay. Our troops are definitely getting a good workout. So uh, okay, you can see this unit is broken on the other side of the river, so they're not they're not going to be any kind of threat. So uh, our troops are beginning to push forward on both sides of the town here. We do still have one unit, uh, one French unit in the town that we have to clear out. It's so, alright, we're deployed in line here. So I think we're going to kick out some skirmishers here to uh, line the uh, the edge of the uh, the vineyard and start uh, seeing if we can pluck away at this battalion here. All right, the uh, the troops inside the town are withdrawing. They are beginning to pull away from the town. So this unit is pretty tired. So uh, I'm going to bring up our fresh unit here that's uh, doing a lot better uh, in terms of fatigue and uh, see if we can bring them around to the back of the town here. And we'll just move this line muted up here just to get them nice and close to the objective. And we'll put our officer in the town here. So we got nine minutes to go on the objective. And our, our skirmishers uh, have uh, opened up and the French have uh, pulled back again. It's 
So we'll kick out another group here and uh, just kind of get some more skirmishers out here. Start plucking away at these battalions that are still uh, hanging around in the center. And uh, we'll also try and do something similar with this unit we're bringing up and send and kind of get some skirmishers out in here as well. We'll let this battalion rest. They did some hard work. So, all right, we got a brief lull in the fighting here uh, as the French are beginning to pull back. We've got some skirmishers uh, going out to continue to press uh, the few battalions that are hanging around. And uh, we will move this battalion out of the way, put them uh, back behind the town here so they can rest. They also did some heavy work, uh, but it will open up the uh, field of fire for these guns. And we'll move our line battalion forward just to add some muscle to the uh, the fire. You can hear the guns have uh, opened up as that uh, as that line unit is getting out of the way. So all right, here comes our fresh level five unit, and they're coming around behind the French rear here, uh, and we can have them. Uh, deploy into line as well as kick out some skirmishers. So we're slowly uh, circling around the back of the town here and uh, sort of pushing the French out of the way here. We're continuing to advance our skirmishers on them as well as our line battalions. Uh, the, the French, the two French guns that withdrew, they've deployed on the back of the hill here. Not too close. Not too worried about them. We certainly won't uh, go far enough forward to get back into their deadly range. So uh, another French unit is withdrawing. These two units are giving us their back. So we're going to deploy into line here. So one of them is now uh, wheeling to face us. Uh, this is a really big unit we have here. But uh, we're going to kick off some skirmishers to screen our unit with. As I've said many times before, screening your line battalions with skirmishers is like the Starship Enterprise putting up its shields. So the skirmishers uh, will screen us and basically act like shields to prevent our line unit from taking excessive losses because skirmishers don't take excessive losses. So we'll just pluck them right in front of our line unit like this. Our line unit will continue firing, but they will be screened by uh, our skirmishers. So uh, again, we don't have control of these guns. I would love to move them forward if I could, um, but uh, I do not have control of them. So uh, what do we have back on the road here? Looks like we have some some reinforcements coming in. So this must be the other Hessian Brigade of the division that we are part of. So uh, as we can see, they are not the same level of troop quality that uh, our brigade has. They are, looks like, level five seasons. Which is by no means bad, don't get me wrong. Level 5 is, like, average. It's, it's you know, they're hardly conscripts, you know, they're, they're trained troops. Uh, but certainly uh, there is a big difference between a level 5 unit and a level 8 unit. A big difference. So, all right, we've got our skirmishers uh, around back of the town now. And uh, what I'm going to do is take this skirmisher unit and this one and move them forward and actually link up our two skirmisher lines here uh, in back of the town so that we have basically completely in, uh, encircled the town and it's now fully under our possession. And we have a nice skirmisher line running across our front now.
and uh, the guns have started firing because we've gotten this unit out of the way of their field of fire. So uh, I had them there initially because I wanted to protect them from getting shot at by the French battalions that were initially very, very close. Uh, but now that the French have been pushed back, we can get them out of the way and uh, reopen their field of fire. I can't move them. I wish I could, but they'll at least do whatever they can. Uh, so we're going to bring this line unit forward and set them up in here. And I'm just making sure here by checking that, okay, we only need 200 men. So I can move this unit forward out of range of the objective and we'll still have plenty of men from this unit in range of the objective. And we'll keep our officer right where he is. We've got three minutes to go until uh, we can claim this objective. And uh, again, the French are continuing to pull back. And our, our skirmisher line is uh, now strongly in, uh, in possession of the forward area here. And uh, the French are continuing to withdraw here. So uh, we'll push our skirmishers forward again. See if we can really push them out of the, uh, the area. And uh, this unit is beginning to rec uh, recover its fatigue. It's back up to fine. So, all right, our skirmishers have moved forward again. They're again tangling with this French battalion, who are uh, again pulling back as they're they're uh, withdrawing as uh, while they're engaged. and uh, we'll push our line units up as well. So we've completely pushed through the town now, taken full possession of it. And uh, once again, the French battalions are withdrawing. And uh, I think that's about as far as we need to go. We have firm possession of the town and the objective now. Uh, any further forward, we risk coming into the death range of those two guns on the hill there. It's not necessary. Only need to do what you need to do. You know, the French have two broken battalions now. The rest of their battalions are consistently withdrawing. Uh, I think we have done what we came to do. So we have one minute to go on this objective. We have 1163 points. And the uh, two French battalions are continuing to fall back. They have two in reserve, but again, they're supported by our two, two guns of artillery. There's no reason for us to go tangle with it. At this point, uh, we have good control of the town and the objective. So uh, we'll pull our line units back just to get them further away from the, uh, the French guns. We'll leave the skirmishers up there. We might pull them back a little bit from the guns. Skirmishers don't really take casualties from artillery that badly, so uh, we can afford to leave them a little further forward. So, uh, uh, all right, we're about to uh, clinch our objective here. All righty. And as you can see, it is a cool 1,000 points. We now have 2,163 points. That has put us over 2,000 points that we need for a major victory. Uh, so we have done it. Um, uh, now, it is a hold objective, uh, but you would need to hold it for another 15 minutes, and there isn't 15 minutes left in the scenario. Uh, so even though we still have it, we're not going to get any more points from it. So uh, here comes our second brigade uh, moving through the town of Lampertheim. Lamper, Lampertheim. Thyme, Heim, I don't know. I can't pronounce these towns. Mundelsheim, Lampertheim.
So uh, as you can see, the uh, our leftmost guard unit here is continuing to recover their fatigue. We'll bring them up now. They're in pretty good shape. Put them in line. And uh, we'll have most of our brigade in front of the town at this point. So, uh, yeah, things have really quieted down. The French have pulled back. Uh, they still have an effective fighting force out there, but it doesn't look like they have, they want any more part of these, uh, these Hessians. So again, I'm just going to pull this skirmish unit back a little bit just to get them a little further away from the French guns. Like I said, skirmishers don't really take casualties from artillery that badly unless they're, you know, in canister range. Uh, but there's no need for them to be quite that far forward. And we'll just straighten the skirmisher line out a little bit just so it's uh, effectively screening all our battalions in case any of the French battalions decide to feel froggy and come forward again. But uh, I don't think they will. All of those battalions tasted uh, tasted Hessian bayonets, and I'm sure they don't want to taste them again. And uh, this unit certainly was the brunt of the bore the brunt of the charge. They did take a lot of losses, so uh, we're keeping them back behind the town to occupy the objective, and we'll let them recover their morale and their fatigue. So there's eight minutes left to go in the scenario. As I said, it's an hour long, and we started at 1500, and we have taken the town of Mundelsheim. Uh, we securely occupy it. We have uh, most of our brigade out front with a strong skirmisher line in front. We're in good position. Now, I would just love to be able to bring this battery uh, that we captured kind of right up in here and just let them bomb away on all this out front. But uh, no, we don't have control of them, so I can't do that. Uh, this, this unit is obviously very broken, uh, as is this one over here. And uh, the two French guns that uh, managed to skedaddle away from our charge uh, are, have deployed on the rear side of this hill and are, are continuing to pluck away and do whatever they can. I think we're a little too far away for them to really do anything seriously. So uh, it was a bloody battle, though. We took 500 casualties. Oh, I'm sorry. We took 500 casualties and we inflicted 700 uh, uh, casualties. So uh, another battery of artillery has moved forward. And uh, we can see our second brigade. It looks like they're deploying into column. And uh, we can see them marching neatly by. What's up, guys? Yeah, you were a lot of help. Way to show up at the end after everything's done. Bunch of heroes. And we can see our... Uh, our other battery here has kind of ceased firing as the French have fallen. Uh, kind of back beyond their range. So as the uh, second brigade appears to be funneling through the town here, and uh, they're just uh, kind of parking themselves back here in marching column. help they were. So uh, here we are back with our brigade who have done all the hard work, captured Mundelsheim, and uh, yeah, you can hear the French guns still firing, but uh, they don't seem to be doing anything. So uh, all right, well we got a little bit of a lull here. Uh, as the scenario winds down, I'm just going to make a quick run to the fridge. I'll be right back, guys.
All right, guys, I am back as uh, we're winding things down here. We got uh, four minutes left in the scenario. See some dead bodies on the ground here. A lot of dead bodies. A lot of dead Hessians. We did take a we did take a beating on the approach. Our brave countrymen, heroes all. So, uh, all right, we now have at least a division on the field here. We have two brigades, ours and uh, our second brigade here, as well as two batteries of artillery, plus the guns we captured from the French. So a sizable Hessian force has uh, taken the towns of Lampersheim and uh, Mundelsheim. Mundelsheim? I'm not sure how you pronounce it. There's some dead Frenchmen on the ground. Yeah, you know, war is a bloody business. Now, I can see our score just dropped by 10 points, so uh, those French guns have found range on somebody here. Now the, now the task is to find out who. And more importantly, let's see if it happens again. Yep, so again, our points are dropping, so the French guns have found range on a unit. So it's not the skirmishers. And I kind of remember the score of all these units. So it's these guys. These guys were at minus 9, and now they're at minus 25. So the French guns have found range on this unit, so uh, I'm going to just get them out of there. So that the uh, the French guns can't extract any further points from us. And we are winding down here. And here we go. All right, so there we go. We got a major victory. Uh, scored 21-47, 2,147 points. Um, we inflicted 735 casualties on the enemy. Uh, we took a lot of casualties. Almost all of that was... Um, was canister fire as uh, we had to cross that river. That was a brutal crossing. Uh, we certainly ate a lot of uh, French grape shot as we tried to cross the, that river. Those guns, those French guns were skillfully placed uh, to be able to flick, inflict maximum damage as we tried to cross the river there. Uh, um, but nevertheless, um, the Hessian troop quality ensured that once we did get across uh, the French were no match for the Hessian bayonets. Uh, so we were able to charge them, take the guns, drive back those battalions, uh, and capture the town. Uh, so uh, that's our first look at the first scenario for uh, Les Saint-Georges. Once again, I just have to send out another huge thanks to all the hard work um, that Mitra uh, and, and company did creating this mod not expansion mod uh, as well as red bugler you're just my hero for life uh for making the grog toolbar work with this uh mod um you guys are all awesome and 
uh, once again, uh, I am now fully back into Scourge of War. We have a, a lot of new content now to look forward to. Uh, uh, we have uh, uh, another a French divisional scenario, a French core scenario, and then the full battles from both the French side and the Austrian side. Uh, so uh, a lot more to come uh, in the near future. And uh, thanks, guys, for watching. And uh, as I said, I'll retitle the first video, like First Look at Lace and Jor or something. Uh, and uh, this here will be uh, the first episode of our playthrough uh, through uh, the new mod of Lace and Jor's. So, um, all right, guys, that's it for now. Take it easy, and I'll see you next time for the next video.